All right, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, lizards and wizards, we are back for the first grand finals of the Brewers Brawl. I hope you guys have all been enjoying the matches so far. Sure, they've been slightly one-sided affairs in terms of the scoreboard at 2-0 apiece. But hey, this is a chance for Shimmer Pack to get its revenge. We've got Loco Pojo on Shimmer down now versus Jaffa. Tomorrow never dies. Jaffa desperately trying to stay awake. It's getting very late over there in the UK. Actually, it's been very late in the UK. It's just getting even later. It's just how time works, apparently. So we are getting ready for those challenges to go out. But I'm going to do a quick recap of the deck list we can expect right now. So first, let's check out uh, Loco's deck again. Here's his little shimmer down now. He's got a fun little shimmer pack chalice deck where he's just playing lots of little units early on and then turns them into bigger dudes later in the game seems pretty reasonable to me and then we've also got uh jaffa's oh, deck wait. tomorrow never dies maybe an unoriginal name you know it's a fair criticism but not an unoriginal deck i don't think anyone can say that we've got uncastable flame blasts we've got uncastable dimensional rifts but guess what? Once you discard him into the void, Westwind Herald doesn't care. Once he hits you, he's going to cast whatever he damn well pleases. And you know what? I think casting Dimensional Rift is pretty pleasing. I, I have some experience with that. So, yeah. Let's, uh, let's see if I can get this thing going. All right. Send away the challenge, please. And... Hopefully, Loco's connection stays stable this time. The internet doesn't betray us. And... Jaffa needs his IGN. <laughs> Jaffa is not friends with Loco Pojo. So... <laughs> let's, let's get that together. <laughs> uh, Jaffa... <laughs> Okay, I suppose this counts as technical difficulties. <laughs> but we will be getting the match started as soon as this issue is tackled. <laughs> oh. Do, do, do. <laughs> uh, let me see if, if I can get these mortal enemies to become friends. Great. Okay, great. Looks like this has been solved. Maybe. <laughs> Hashtag beta problems, apparently. Oh, I think they've got it. I think we've got the challenge out. Jaffa took out a party in the USA from level 13 David. A, a different take on Shimmer Pack, where he was trying to go wide with some some of the fire token cards as well. Oh, baby, you've got a game. And I should probably have all the hand captures and stuff available. So let, let me do that. Because that we, we can actually use it this time. Boom, magic. We've got a game, boys and girls. All right, and there is the uncastable dimensional rift making its old debut. Oh, so exciting. And I have the same hand set up for both. Why is that? Let me figure this out. Oh, you know what? That was from last time. Let me fix that. Boop, 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 boop. Technical difficulties. Hey, there we go. There's the shimmer pack we all know and love. All right. So, oh, ho. got the temple scribe with... Aegis, whoa! That's gonna be hard to deal with. All right. Jaffa just desperately playing a 4-4 flyer just to try and not die. <laughs> hey, man. I ain't a pro until I get paid for this, and that might be a very long time at this rate. <laughs> 
Yeah, but we've got some action going on. We've got units in play. We've got spells being slung. We've got a dimensional rift going to the void. And that's got to send some shivers down Loco Pojo's spine. you got to be nervous about that. He's just hoping and praying that a Herald's not going to show up and get through. But luckily for Pojo, he's got some flyers to get in the way of all those shenanigans anyways. Jaffa deciding to not hit for four. Just somewhat interesting. And Pojo deciding to not put Shimmer Pack on top of his uh, deck, despite having a crown of possibilities in play. <laughs> I am doing okay. Thank you for the high praise, Dark Hands. I, I very much appreciate it. <laughs> and all right, Jaffa's like, it's time to get the marshal out there, try and try and just overwhelm Pojo's resources. Pojo probably frantically trying to do math with his crystal eyes, figuring out can he somehow kill Jaffa here by just hitting him a couple times. The answer currently is no, you can't. You certainly can't right now. Uh, um, oh, is he going to shimmer pack his his own board, his opponent's board? He is deciding to upgrade his units into 5-5s. Five and swinging them in. Of course, now Jaffa knows the way will be cleared for his Westwind Herald to maybe cast a Dimensional Rift. Of course, he's got to live bef in the meantime to be able to pull off that line. But it's looking like a possibility right now. Of course, he doesn't know that Pojo's got a Crystallize in hand, which would give Pojo lethal even through the Excavate. Um, now, oh, he plays Marshall, plays a power, he p gets to play Herald, and this Herald will... Ha but he doesn't have double primal. He can't play the Herald. Oh, and that's just going to give Pojo the lethal. Wow. If, if he had that second primal, he would have been able to play that Herald, and at least the Herald could have blocked for a turn. Uh, but because he didn't have that, uh, no blockers available means he is dead. So we are going to go to sideboards and get ready for game number two. And Shimmer Pack draws first blood. Pojo will not shimmer down. He will not. He refuses. I should probably update the correct score here. Loco Pojo is player one. All right. Boom. Sideboards are out. They are deciding on what to do here. I think I see some Reign of Frogs coming in. Oh, -hoo, that's fun. Always fun to have frogs around. I guess it becomes pretty hard to... Uh, cast spells from the void if those spells have become frogs. So pretty, pretty good idea from Pojo in that regard. And let's see what Joff is thinking about with with his sideboard here. He's got he's got some interesting options. That Scourge of Frost Home, of course, hanging out and being lonely. Passage of Ages is very interesting if he wants to bring that in against a deck that has both Crown of Possibilities and Xenon Obelisk. He's also got some extra backlashes that he could bring in. A uh, lightning storm to try and clear out those tokens before they get shimmered into their true form. So, yeah, Jaffa's got some interesting decisions to make. Does he want to try and lower his curve, deal with these go-wide boards? It looks like he's bringing in some lightning storms to help with that. Does he take out any of his really sweet spells, though? I hope not. Oh, man, he's hovering over Dimensional Rift. I... Yeah, I don't think he's going to take it out. I think Jaffa understands. And... <laughs> let's let's see what's going on with, with Pojo. All right, the Decay's coming in. And what is, what is Pojo up to? Oh, I think we're about to see. It looks like challenges are going out. I'll let them know they can challenge. And then we'll get back to the action. Do, 
All right, challenges are out. Waiting for the for them to accept. And we have liftoff. We've got game number two of the grand finals of the first ever Brewers Brawl. Match point for Loco Pojo. Yes, I'm doing just a best of three. I wanted to keep it short and fun uh, this week, and we'll see kind of how the format and uh, the content evolves from here on out. If you guys have suggestions, you think the finals should be best of five instead, we can maybe make that adjustment. I mostly wanted to keep it shorter for Jaffa's sake, uh, This, and just because I didn't want to go out and ask a bunch of people, hey, do this unproven content for me, and also, it's going to be three hours long. So if you could just take that out of your time, that'd be great. So uh, I went a little conservative this first week. If we find we have some more time to stretch this into, I will certainly consider that. But we're off to the races here. Loco Pojo wasting no time building his board and his resources with the Talir's favor. Uh, getting that O2 out. That has aspirations of maybe one day becoming a 4-4 or even a 5-5. Five five. And follows it up with an Eastwind Herald. So he's... It's got some stuff on the board. It's not really threatening Jaffa's life total. And Jaffa's like, you know what? Here's a 3 4 for 3 in CRF. And asking Pojo, what are you going to do about it? And Pojo's like, well, I'm going to take a look at your hand and give you some frogs. So now the question is what is going to become a frog? Jaffa doesn't want frogs in his hands, he's not happy. Oh, and there goes the Great Parliament. The Great Parliament now is a frog. So for those that have not seen Reign of Frogs before, what just happened was it costs four power. You look at your opponent's hand, and that you choose a card from it that's not a power, and that non-power card becomes a 1-1 one, one frog that costs zero and has destiny. And all copies of that card in his deck also become frogs. So anytime Jaffa would draw a great parliament from here on out he's going to draw a frog instead that frog will go into play and he'll get to draw another card uh not not quite as impactful as making six four four flyers that we saw from java in some of the other rounds the reign of frogs was not premium there was a bug before where non-premium reign of frogs would not work on premium cards i believe that has been fixed I'm not 100% positive on that, but I know I ran into that bug a lot when uh, premiums first came out and I was playing premium cards and people tried to rain of frogs me, and it turned out my premium champion of cunning was still a premium champion of cunning after being hit by rain of frogs, and my opponents were not happy about that. And yeah, the Yeti Spies are coming in, they're having a party, they want to draw some cards for Loco Pojo here, and uh, we'll see what Pojo finds Maybe he'll, uh, he's not going to find any frogs, but maybe he'll find something that shimmers if he's lucky. Man, Yeti. These parties of Yetis, man. There is the shimmer pack. We have a shimmer pack, boys. And man, if, if Loco draws a power here, he's going to have buffed up obelisks. He's going to have shimmer pack. He is just going off with this stuff right now. Yetis are letting their party be known. They will not be ignored. And Jaffa using Celestial Omen, trying to figure out what the optimal card to get is here. How does he get out of this? Of course, Pojo's not going to mind the Sweeper too much. Uh, he already got his cards off of his first Yeti party, and he's got another Yeti party to reload the board. Jaffa opts for Lightning Storm and just draws Harsh Rule anyways. Why not? Not sure why he chose to get the Lightning Storm over Harsh Rule, but... Oh, because, of course, the Seraph lives. What, why would that confuse me for even a second? Of course, that's that's why he chose that. So, yeah, he gets to keep Seraph. He can start activating it next turn if he so pleases. And, uh... You know, he's just being, he's just being pressured, essentially, by a 2-4 right now. Pojo is just going to keep playing some Yeti Spies. And they are now 3 threes. Next turn, they're going to be 5-5s five if he plays another Obelisk. And Jaffa's going to uh, be pretty happy that he drew Harsh Rule on this turn after tutoring up for his, his Lightning Storm. 
All right, and yep, he'll send Seraph to her death. Pojo will be like, ah, I see, you have harsh rule. And he will offer up nothing to die. But he doesn't feel like taking three either, which is reasonable. And there's the harsh rule. And Jaffa's got an excavate to get back Seraph next turn if he feels that's the line he wants. Or maybe he'll just let the top of the deck speak to him. And Pojo draws a third obelisk. Plays three obelisks, so any unit he draws now will and plays will have plus six, plus six. That shimmer pack will be a 10-10. 10-10 shimmer pack. Of course, it'll just be a 10-10 for seven right now. But moving forward, it could, it could be a bit more than that. Jaffa debating on what he wants to excavate here. And he decides to excavate nothing, draws into mirror image, and passes the turn. And Pojo rips the old 7-7 initiate of the sands off the top. <laughs> and elects to not make two 10-10s here. Decides to just have one 7-7. Probably sniffing out the excavate. Uh, since Jaffa did pause on the last end step. And he's like, you know what? If you want to excavate your arch rule to kill my 7-7, go ahead. And, you know, he's putting Jaffa in a tough spot here. If you're Jaffa, you got to consider it. But at the same time, Pojo doesn't have lethal right now. Of course, if you Shimmer Packs it next turn, it could swing right away and be lethal. But then Excavate saves you in that it gains you two life. So Jaffa's got some interesting decisions to make here. Uh, does he shoot off this Excavate? And if so, what does he get? And it looks like he's going to use it. And he grabs Harsh Rule and puts it on his top of his deck. So he's just going to deal with this initiate and leave it at that. So let's see what Pojo rips off the top. Well, that's not quite what Pojo was looking for, but he gets to play a 10-10 here if he wants. Although it looks like he's in the tank about not. I think I think if you're if you're Pojo, you just gotta put your opponent on the two turn clock. And just put some pressure on him. And Jaffa's like, you know what, that's fine. I, I'm just gonna draw another harsh rule. Cause why wouldn't I? Oh, he's thinking about if he wants a harsh rule this turn. Does he want to use a new tomorrow instead and be greedy? Let himself go to two. <coughs> he's gotta be thinking to himself, does Pojo have an, another Xenon Obelisk? Would that kill me? Does Is he running for? And he's probably frantically trying to find that deck list that I didn't even provide him with because I'm not going to let you guys try hard in this league. And he decides to play it safe and shoot off the harsh rule. And Pojo is now sitting on a lot of power. Of course, any unit he draws will be a huge threat. So he's just hoping to find those. And you know what? Jaffa's kind of in the same boat. Any unit he draws will also be a huge threat because he's got Gemini Ritual and Mirror Image. So once he draws a unit, he can make a copy. He can make a copy of that that has plus four plus four, and then make a copy of that copy that has plus four plus four. And uh, of course, instead he's just going to draw secret pages. Well, what can you do? So we've uh, we've got a real Dirtle Fest on our hands now, and who's going to draw the threat first? And uh, Loco Pojo gets more things above his threats. And, oh, okay. A Combray Healer may not be exactly what the doctor ordered, but it's got attack. It's got health. It'll increase Jaffa's health as well. And it, let's see how many resources he wants to dump into this. Yep, he's going to start the ritual. Buff his 1 up to a 6-9. <laughs> and then get a 6-12. And, yeah, heal himself by a ton. Oh, did he just... Is that a Destiny Cloud Snake Harrier? That is. That is a 9-9 nine, nine Flying Destiny. He opts to not put Permafrost on top of his deck. And just sits back. Now, Joff is back up to 21 health and rips another Harsh Roll off the top. <laughs> and Jaffa is like... Eh, you know what? I can't really block, so I might as well attack. Attacking with the 6-9, a little questionable, I would say. But maybe he was hoping his opponent would just be scared by something. 
And Pojo gets in with the 9-9 flyer. <clears throat> this crystallize still not doing a whole lot right now. And <laughs> more Combray healers for Jaffa. And of course, there's not going to be much local Pojo really wants to crystallize in terms of getting through his attackers because all of Jaffa's parliaments are uh, frogs still, as you recall. So he's really just saving this crystallize to win a race here. Um, because Jaffa will have lethal next turn, and Loco Pojo will not have lethal for two turns. So it's going to imagine hit for nine here, and then crystallize and try and kill him that way. Or he could try and hold back his nine nine. But yeah, he's opting to try and go for the kill. Oh, that's permafrost. That's not even going to get unstunned. Yeah, so he's not even worried about lethal yet. He's going to hold on to this crystallize and... Ooh, boy! Wow! Jaffa draws the marshal, silences the permafrost. It is no longer stunned and gets lethal. Whoo! Combray healers dealing the death. And we've got a we've got a tied game. We've got a tied match, boys. 1-1. One, one. Jaffa gets it. Desert Marshal saying, "Oh no. We're not going out like this. The fun will continue. The fun police making the fun continue." And we are all tied up. One, two, one. Okay. Desert Marshal showing off his incredible power and flexibility. And Permafrost showing off uh, that the perma part of it may be a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> Not quite the permanent solution you always want it to be. All right, looks like the next challenge will be going out in just a second. They are getting ready right now. So who do you got for the last game? Let's see some predictions. still getting ready to send out this challenge who will reign supreme who will be crowned the brewmaster of the week uh Decrier, the reason that works is because silence affects all attachments on a unit and because permafrost is attachment all of the text on permafrost goes away and he can attack. But yes, you can even silence units that are stunned. Um, so, but it, it permanently works as a solution on permafrost as well. And here we go. The challenge is out. The game is ready, set. Here we go. And let me see here. I'll get this uh, mulligan hand up. And, uh, damn. <laughs> I was so excited. I forgot I had that feature. And Pojo on the play with the turn one initiate of the sands. He's coming out guns blazing. And Jaffa's like, all right, all right, that's fine. I'll just sit over here and have my secret pages in hand and scheme. Boy, Pojo's drawing cards. He's gaining power. He's drawing shimmer packs. He's got a beautiful curve here. And he's got to hope Jaffa didn't draw a lightning storm, which Jaffa did. Uh-oh. So if you're Pojo, do you play the Disciple? Do you play the Obelisk? Plays Disciple, I'm sure he opts to make a sand crawler. And if you're Jaffa, you've got to be pretty content to fire off the lightning storm here. You get three units out. You take out one of his power. Nope, he is opting to secret pages and keep developing his power. He's hoping he can live long enough to shoot off one of these harsh rules instead. But now this Xenon Obelisk is going to put um, Marizan's Disciple out of Lightning Storm range if Pojo opts to go that direction. Pojo debating between Obelisk and Crown, but he wisely decides to put on the pressure and go Obelisk. And now Jaffa's got to be a little nervous here. 
he, he gambled and he might get punished for it. And, okay, he draws a Combray healer. They might opt to play this and hope that Loco dedicates more to the board. Of course, Loco might just dedicate more Xenon Obelisks to the board and keep beating down with it. And that is what he opts to do. If you're Jaffa, I'm sure you just throw yourself in front of the 5-5, five five, take as little damage as possible, because you know you're going to be throwing out a harsh rule this next turn. And that is what Jaffa opts to do. He takes 10 and goes to 4 here, but then hopefully stabilizes. Local Pojo needs to draw a primal source, but even then, because he's losing initiate of the sands, he still won't be able to cast Scouting Party. So losing this power is massive. Initiate of the Sands was really propping up Loco's hand here, and now he's stuck doing not a whole lot. He plays Crown of Boss abilities and hopes to hit some Destiny creatures because uh, he's not doing anything anytime soon. Jaffa now is free to dirtle away as he pleases. He puts his trusty Flame Blast into the Void for later use. And he is just digging through, it looks like, for more res resources. <laughs> and Jaffa finds some more power. He opts to discard Lightning Storm. It's pretty bad when your opponent has all of his units getting plus two, plus two. And Loco draws another uncastable. All right. J Jaffa finds some more Herald Songs and is just going to keep sifting through his deck, finding the exact cards he wants. Uh, develop the exact hand he wants. Imagine he just wants to hold on to this backlash because he knows a uh, scouting party will eventually be coming and he wants to have a clean, efficient answer to that. And here comes CRF. Oh my god, and Loco still continues to whiff on power. At least now any power will let him start drawing some more cards. But he just couldn't quite cl close the deal and now... Oh man, Jaffa is drawing cards, playing large units. Drawing, oh ho ho, Desert Marshal. And drawing the Shiver Pack. I didn't quite see what keyword it got, but it wasn't Destiny. And Pojo is now under a lot of pressure. Jaffa is activating Syrup and gets a Karmic Guardian. So now Jaffa is going to start gaining life. All right, Loco gets to draw two cards, gets an Initiate. With Destiny, all right, he's got a 4-4 in play. So, so Loco's slightly back in it now. Will he be able to turn this around? Jaffa has Reign of Frogs in hand, another Seraph for good measure. But I imagine he's just on the Activate Seraph plan now. Oh no, he is going to make the frogs rain from above. And Loco does not want any frogs in his hand. So, J Jaffa's got the decision. Does he want to turn Shimmer Packs into frogs? Or does he want to turn Scouting Parties into frogs? Uh, he can now see that his opponent has at least one power in hand. Because that's the card he can't see. He can, can only see non-powered cards. He sees it to Lear's favor. So, Jaffa knows how to do math. He can add up to seven power. So, he opts to... Ooh... He doesn't frogify any of that. He frogifies the crystallize. He decides that that is not what he wants to be against. Because, you know what? He's got backlash. He's not too worried about scouting party. But Shimmer Pack's still got to be some sort of concern here. And, yeah, this is going to be, I imagine, the backlash for Yeti Party. He, there it is. Loco goes down to 10. And does Jaffa flash in this Desert Marshal for some reason? You can silence the Initiate, take your, take your opponent off of hitting 7 power again next turn. Although he knows his opponent has another scouting party. He opts to do it anyway. Silences that. Just tries to restrict Pojo's resources. And he's just going to draw some cards. Excavate. All right, is the draw there. Imagine he just activates Seraph now and just bashes in with some dudes. Pojo does have to block this 8-8 because of the two power 
two attack flyer coming in the skies. And boy, this is this is this is a close one. Jaffa's got the resource advantage, which is right where he wants to be. And Pojo's gotta find a way to sneak in some damage. This uh this infinite hourglass is going to have to probably hit another creature with destiny, I think. Alright, Primal Sigil. Let's Pojo get four. Yep, four more creatures in play. So, really, just the Karmic Guardian is currently pressuring his life total. Jaffa opting not to use Excavate there. Maybe he didn't have any great options? I'm not sure. I can't look at the void myself to, to tell you. But apparently his options were dire enough that he felt that just drawing a random card off the top of his deck was better. Which is fair. So, I think if you're, you're Java here, you just activate Seraph pre-combat. Hope to hit something like Akaria for lethal. Or one of those other flying charge justice units, which don't exist. But there's one. And instead he gets, <laughs> oh my god, that says, oh, what, Fortunate Stranger? That's Fortunate Stranger. Draws him a card. Uh, so, hey, pay eight, draw a card, get a 6-6. Six, six. Not the worst deal in the world. Not the worst deal in the world. And he opts to swing in with his 8-8 eight, eight Mystic. Okay. And the Guardian comes in as well. Pojo offs to just chump here. And yeah, this this decision to, to frogify the crystallize bearing fruit right here. It's clearly paying off. And Pojo has drawn another obelisk. I think that's all four now. He has drawn all four obelisks. Oh. Okay, Pojo opts to shimmer pack Jaffa's board to stop the flyer stop the seraph of course the problem is his board is still smaller than Jaffa's so I'm not quite sure he thought this through properly because <laughs> now if any two of Jaffa's creatures get through Pojo is dead which means Pojo has to make a lot of bad blocks here if, of course, if Jaffa doesn't swing for lethal, Pojo has the potential to swing back for lethal because of these Xenon Obelisks effectively being a lot of burst damage on his Shimmer Pack that will live. And Jaffa just gets to kind of keep his whole board and add more to it if he wants to. He can play both Seraph and Mystic Ascendant here. And that's probably the line he's going to take. Now if you're Pojo, you're in a lot of trouble. That is not the card you want to see. And I think that's the end of the Shimmering Dream for Pojo. The Brit might have it here. I don't see a way out of it for him. All right, he buffs up his guy. He says, hey, I have a huge dude. Maybe he attacks and hopes Jaffa forgets to block. He does not take that line. And uh, the GG's go out. And, of course, Loco dies by, or lives by the Shimmer Pack. And here he dies by the Shimmer Pack. The four fours come in and eat him up. And that brings an end to the first finals of our Brewers Brawl. I hope you guys all enjoyed the matches. Let me see if Joff is willing to stay up a little bit longer for a mini interview. But if he has to get to bed, I uh, certainly understand that. I will see 
what he says. Yeah. So there we have it. Uh, Jaffa with uh, with quite quite the brew. I would say say he earned his victory tonight and the title of Brewmaster Supreme. That was 